on this edition of Manned Space, we fly to the moon with the astronauts of Apollo 11 and examine a collectible that made possible their safe return home. May 5, 1961, Alan Shepard completed a 15-minute suborbital space flight to become the first American to travel into space. Shepard attained a maximum altitude of 116 miles and had to penetrate the Earth's atmosphere in order to return home safely. In doing so, the surface temperature of the Mercury space capsule reached temperatures as high as 2,700 degrees Fahrenheit. The vehicle was able to withstand those high temperatures due in large part to its shape. Scientists had wrestled with the problem of protecting objects from the heat of re-entry as early as the early 1950s. They were developing missiles capable of lifting nuclear payloads into space and delivering the payload somewhere on Earth. They were concerned with protecting the payload from the heat created when it passed back through the atmosphere. Conventional wisdom at that time was that a sleek rifle-shaped configuration with a sharply pointed nose was the best way to overcome the heating problem. Unfortunately, the pointed nose shape concentrated heat at the tip of the object and caused it to break apart. Then, in 1951, National Advisory Committee for Aeronautics researcher H. Julian Harvey Allen predicted that changing the nose shape from sharp to blunt would avoid the heating problem. Allen and his associate Alfred J. Eggers verified that a blunt body shape similar to that of Shepard's capsule when re-entering the atmosphere would force the buildup of a shock wave that would deflect heat safely away from the structure. Industry skeptics were slow to pick up on the blunt body concept. But by the late 1950s, Allen's blunt body idea caught the attention of NASA's Space Task Group, which was developing vehicles for manned space travel. In 1954, Maxime Faget, one of the Space Task Group's engineers, had been involved in the planning of the X-15, a rocket-powered experimental aircraft that eventually flew to the edge of space at nearly seven times the speed of sound. While working on the problem of extreme heat buildup on aircraft traveling that fast, Faget became impressed with Allen's blunt body research. According to NASA, Faget's work in conceiving a one-man blunt-ended capsule-type vehicle proved to be the cornerstone for selection of the Project Mercury spacecraft. Less than three weeks after Alan Shepard's historic flight, President John F. Kennedy addressed the joint session of Congress. I believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the earth. No single space project in this period will be more impressive to mankind or more important for the long range exploration of space. Among the myriad of challenges presented by President Kennedy's stated goal was how to protect a manned space vehicle from the heat buildup of returning from the moon. Like Project Mercury before it, Project Gemini relied on a blunt body for its manned spacecraft. The Apollo command module was also to be a blunt body spacecraft. But the Apollo spacecraft, called the command module, presented unique obstacles for instance, an Apollo spacecraft could reach a maximum distance from Earth of almost 250,000 miles. From that distance, an Apollo spacecraft returning from the Moon would be falling back to Earth at nearly 25,000 miles per hour. The friction created traveling at those speeds would cause temperatures of approximately 5,000 degrees Fahrenheit. By way of comparison, the greatest altitude achieved before the Apollo program was 850 miles, attained by the crew of Gemini 11. The Gemini spacecraft could reach a maximum speed of 18,000 miles per hour. At that speed, the vehicle's heat shield would heat up to approximately 3,000 degrees Fahrenheit. 
So while it was clear the Apollo spacecraft would be a blunt body vehicle, new technologies were necessary to contend with these higher speeds and temperatures. The prime contractor for the Apollo command module was North American Aviation, but it was the people of the Aronka Company that manufactured major components of the Apollo heat shield. Aronka fabricated a special stainless steel honeycomb sandwich that served as the outer structure of the spacecraft. Then, an ablative or heat dissipating material was applied to the entire stainless steel structure. Developed by the AVCO Corporation's Space Systems Division, the ablative material was composed of a fiberglass honeycomb impregnated with a resin and bonded to the stainless steel structure with an epoxy-based adhesive. The material was heated and injected into each of the more than 370,000 cells that comprise the honeycomb structure. If the ablative material was to work properly, it would melt and erode away from the command module as it heated up. On December 27, 1968, the ablative material proved its effectiveness when the crew of Apollo 8 re-entered the Earth's atmosphere before completing man's first flight to the moon. Then, on July 16, 1969, Apollo 11 astronauts Neil Armstrong, Buzz Aldrin, and Mike Collins blasted off from the Kennedy Space Center in hopes of successfully completing man's first lunar landing. Ignition sequence starts. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. All engine running. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. 32 minutes past the hour. Liftoff on Apollo 11. Just four days after their launch, astronauts Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin successfully landed their lunar module called Eagle on the moon's surface. Contact light. Okay, engine stop. Houston, uh, Tranquility Base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, Twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Within hours of safely landing on the moon, Neil Armstrong exited the lunar module for his first historic steps on the lunar surface. That's one small step for man. Armstrong was soon joined on the lunar surface by Buzz Aldrin. The two remained on the moon for over 21 hours before launching for a rendezvous and docking with the command module for the trip home. The heat shield and its ablative material were once again put to the test on July 24, 1969, when the crew successfully passed through Earth's atmosphere and splashed down in the Pacific Ocean. We're looking at a display that contains an ablative plug removed from the Apollo 11 command module Columbia following its return from the moon. Fabricated from the same ablative material as the rest of the heat shield, this plug was threaded into a hold to cover a bolt that secured an access panel to the spacecraft's exterior. This plug was one of over 500 such plugs installed on Columbia and was removed by O.W. Nassi in August of 1969. Nassi was one of about a dozen Rockwell Space Division workers assigned to Apollo 11's post-landing and safety recovery team. In this close-up photo taken of Columbia while it was on display at the Smithsonian Air and Space Museum, Plugs similar to this one can clearly be seen, as can a hole where a plug had been removed. In addition to the ablative plug and written description, the display includes a photograph of Columbia as it is hoisted aboard the USS Hornet. Finally, it includes an Apollo 11 mission patch. I acquired this space-flown artifact in a silent auction held by the Astronaut Scholarship Foundation in 2009. Are you a collector of space-flown artifacts? 
Maybe you have an object that flew aboard Apollo 11. If so, please tell us about it in the comments section below. Thanks again for watching Manned Space. Please watch for upcoming videos at least twice a week, during which I'll discuss the history of the space program by highlighting artifacts and memorabilia from my extensive space collection. Also, please like, subscribe, and click the notification button for more great content about manned space.